Today we're gonna tackle 50 years of crazy X-Men stories and characters and just stuff, so let's do it. Welcome to Comic Misconceptions, a show that does stuff. I'm your host, me. And 50 years ago, X-Men number one was published by Marvel Comics. And in light of this celebration, I want to bring you guys 50 awesome facts about X-Men. I want to, but I'm short on time, so we'll just see how many I get. It's, it's not going to it's not gonna be 50. You probably already know by the title of this episode. But anyway, let's start it off with number one, which well, was last week's trivia question, which was... What material were Cyclops' glasses made of? Once again, a ton of you guys got it right on YouTube and Facebook and even Google Plus. Like a ton of people did, so congratulations you guys. It's so awesome that you're getting involved. I'll, having them all scroll along the bottom here. And of course the answer is Ruby Quartz. Cyclops didn't always need these glasses, however, there was never a steady stream of energy pouring out of his eyeballs, even when his powers emerged. He only needed the glasses when he realized that he could never fully control his mutant abilities. How Cyclops got Ruby Quartz glasses has changed over the years. So first it was just an optometrist who was trying to ease Scott's headaches and glowy red eyes that he got because of his mutation, and he just kind of stumbled upon Ruby Quartz as a solution, just kind of out of nowhere. Then it was revealed that Mr. Sinister put mental blocks on Scott to help try to control his powers, but when he realized that he could never do that, he physically tried to block it by way of the Ruby Quartz glasses. But in the most recent origin of Scott Summers, they skip the glasses altogether and just go straight to the classic visor that we know that was given to him by none other than Professor X. Now the original team for the X-Men is a different roster than you might expect. It only consisted of Cyclops, Jean Grey, Beast, Angel, and Iceman. And of course, Professor X, if you want to count that. Now, it feels like somebody's missing, right? Because when you think X-Men, you probably think Wolverine, too. Unfortunately, Wolverine wasn't introduced until the 70s, because in the 60s, he was all like, Excuse me, I'm Eric Lynch. Charles Xavier. Go f*** yourself. Actually, he was really in Canada fighting Hulk. You see, Wolverine first had his appearance in a similar cameo type deal in Incredible Hulk number 180, and then his first full appearance in Incredible Hulk 181. When coming up with ideas for the character, two possible ideas were on the table. Number one was Wolverine, and number two was Badger. Thank God they went with Wolverine. There's also rumor that Wolverine was meant to be like an actual Wolverine animal that had mutated into a humanoid form. And again, that's not entirely ideal, so yeah. And don't even get me started on Wolverine's claws, okay? They were originally just supposed to be like a part of his gloves, like they were just attachments that you could just take on and off. Then it was revealed that they were put into him via the Weapon X program. And then again, we see that Magneto rips all of the adamantium out of Wolverine's skeleton to reveal that he had bone claws hidden there all along. And after Magneto had ripped the adamantium out of him, Wolverine became this kind of noseless beast type thing with even stronger mutations. The reason for this being, as far as I understand it, is that the adamantium in Wolverine's body suppresses his mutations from reaching their full uh, peak because his body is constantly working overtime to prevent himself from dying of adamantium poisoning. Also, one time Wolverine was beaten by Spock. Seriously, that happened. But he didn't die though, oh no. That's a job for Jean Grey. Jean Grey, originally introduced as Marvel Girl, has died approximately 14-ish times in the main Marvel Comics universe. And she's covered such famous deaths as crashing a space shuttle, or being wiped from existence by Thanos, or even being stabbed by Wolverine on more than a few occasions. So let's move on to another founding member of the X-Men, Angel. You also may have seen him looking a little something like this. The reason behind his switch from feather wings to metal wings is because he had his feather wings surgically removed against his wishes, and then he seemingly died in a plane crash, only to be saved by Apocalypse, a mutant who helped give his wings back by using science to build him metal wings. Eventually, his metal wings molted as they do to reveal that his natural wings had been growing back to the way that they were originally. But if we're gonna talk physical changes, we can't not talk about Beast. Hank McCoy was an average looking young mutant 
when he was working on a serum that allowed people to have mutations for a short period of time. He took it himself to disguise his appearance, but he didn't change back in time, so he was stuck the way that he was forever. Kind of like in Animorphs, when that kid turned into like that red-tailed hawk, but he couldn't change back in time, so he was stuck that way for a while. Anybody? No? Much like Hulk, Beast was originally gray, but of course time allowed him to become that beautiful blue color that we all know and love today. But guys, what good is an episode about the X-Men without talking about the man behind it all, Professor X, who, despite what you may have seen in the movies, is not British. He was born in New York. He did study abroad in Oxford for like two years, but like, it's like that's not enough to get an accent. He is the brother of Juggernaut. The Juggernaut! So that's too easy, let's not count that one. Instead, I will tell you the one weakness to Professor Xavier, the one thing that can beat this great man, stares. That's right, what good is that big old brain of yours against the power of gravity? And lastly, but probably most importantly, if you take anything away from this episode, make sure it is this right here, the X in X-Men does not stand for Xavier, despite what you may have heard on the Big Bang Theory. The X-Men were named for the X and Charles Xavier. It's not true. In X-Men number one, it's said clear as day by Charles himself that mutants, and I quote, possess extra power, one which ordinary humans do not. That is why I call my students X-Men, for extra power. There you go, you guys, spelled out right there for you. What's that, like 25? That's close enough to 50. Yeah. Leave in the comments below. Uh, I'm interested to see what you guys think. Who is your favorite X-Men over the past 50 years? Mine, personally, I love Kitty Pride. She's awesome. But I want to see what you guys think. But right now, let's move on to the weekly trivia challenge. So October is a time when a lot of scary things are happening, obviously, because of Halloween. So I figured what better way to celebrate it than by going into some horror comics and scary characters and Halloween-themed stories. And why not start it off with a comic book that is really, really popular as of the last couple years, as well as getting its own show. I know that you know what I'm talking about. It's The Walking Dead. So in the comic and the show, Carl, that little annoying brat that he is, wears a t-shirt with this symbol on it. Your trivia question this week is, what does the symbol on Carl's t-shirt from The Walking Dead mean? If you know the answer, leave it in the comments below on this YouTube video specifically. Uh, we're not gonna do it on Facebook and Twitter anymore because it's getting hard to curate them all. Um, like I said, we had a lot from Google Plus. So all you guys who are watching it in different parts of the internet, please just click on the video and post your answer in the comments below and you can get featured on the show next week. So get started on the weekly trivia challenge, yeah? What the heck was that? All right, guys and gals, a couple quick things to throw at your face before we go. Like Nerd Sync Productions on Facebook for some good, awesome news that we like and some great opinionated conversations with your fellow nerds. Follow us on Twitter for just random junk that I throw up there and questions that I ask you guys that I'm curious to know your responses. And heck, follow me on Twitter, at Scott Nicewander, and send me a tweet about your favorite X-Men quote from any of the X-Men movies, because that's fun, I think. But that's all that I have for your brains today, so join us next week when we talk about more things that you thought you knew about comics. Secondly, but now let's go a little. Please call me out on me and keep care of me. Yeah, 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 right, yeah, right, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, get started on the weekly trivia challenge, yeah. <laughs> what is happening? All right, <clears throat> serious face, let's do it.